So here we have an example that's based on a real life situation um, that happened to me. Uh, I bought this waterproof box to protect, um, you know, just miscellaneous items going when going to the beach. And I took it with me on a plane trip to Fort Myers Beach. And uh, when I was in the flight, I opened up this box and put something in there, closed it back up. And then when I landed, I tried to open it back up and it was a chore to open. It turned out it was quite difficult. So one of the questions in this problem is why was opening the box such a challenge? So let's talk about that for a moment first. Now the reason it was so difficult to open the box is because when I opened it up in, during flight, the pressure in the cabin of the aircraft is uh, lower than sea level pressure. Typically they pressurize the cabin in um, you know typical commercial aircraft to something like, uh, I think it's want to say 8,000 foot altitude typically. So uh, it's at a lower pressure. So then when I closed the box, the interior of the box was at a lower pressure than sea level pressure. And then when we landed, of course it's you know Fort Myers Beach, Florida, that's basically at sea level. So then I had sea level pressure pushing down. So pressure acting downward on this lid was pressure at sea level. Whereas the pressure on the interior was the pressure at about 8,000 foot altitude because that's what it was, that was what the cabin was pressurized at. So the pressure on the outside is much higher than the pressure on the inside. And so there was a, a large pressure force, net pressure force acting downward on the box. So it's larger on the outside, smaller on the inside. So that's what made it very hard to open the box. So part B is estimate the force required to open the box if the force applied if the force is applied at the front of the box. So the way this looks, you can sort of see it here. These are little latches to open the box, but there's a hinge in the very back here. So that if you look at it from the side, so here's that hinge, here's the, this, this part right here is this part. So it's, it's hinged. So if I'm going to apply a force here to peel it open, uh, what kind of force has to be applied to lift that up? And the way we're gonna calculate that is through, a, really it's a torque balance ultimately. So what we have is we have a, the pressure on the outside of the box here pushing down. So this is the atmospheric pressure, or I'll just write sea level pressure. Oops, let's try to spell that correctly. And then we have a pressure force on the inside pushing upward, but this is smaller. This is that pressure at an 8,000 foot altitude equivalent. And then uh, I'm going to try to find what moment or what this force has to be in order to open this up about that hinge. So it's really a torque balance. So what I'm trying to do is sum the moments about the hinge. I'm going to set it equal to zero. So just what's the minimum force I need to just open that thing up? So the way I'm going to do that is let's call this applied force, let's just call it F. And the dimension this way is this D here. So the moment to open the box is going to be equal to, oops, excuse me on that. It's going to be F times D. So it's like an R cross F to open the box. So it's um, force and multiplied by the moment arm, which is just D there. So that's what's going to be required to open it. And then what's holding it closed is the moment due to these pressure forces, okay? So the way I can think about this is imagine the, I'm gonna redraw the surface of the box. It'll look something like this. The hinge is right here. And uh, I'm gonna just draw a little strip of the box here. This is just a little differential area, small area. Let me call this distance from the hinge. Let's call that distance X out to this. Okay, and then I'm gonna call this distance DX. And then the area of this strip there will be a small area. The D indicates just small quantities. So the area of that little strip will be W times DX. W is this distance right here. So it's the distance of that strip. So this strip that I've shown here is the same as this strip right here. So that's the little bit of area. And then I'm gonna find the little bit of pressure force acting on that. So the little bit of pressure force acting on that strip will be the pressure 
the net pressure, which will be the pressure acting down, which will be the P um, C level, minus the pressure acting up, which will be P 8,000 foot altitude, times the area. So pressure times the area, and the area there is DA, or if I plug in the numbers, I'm gonna just write this as delta P so I don't have to write the whole thing out. It'll be delta P times W times DX. So that's the little bit of pressure force acting on this small area. But I wanna get the moment about that hinge. So to find the moment, I'm just gonna do an R cross F. The, the R here is the X and the F is that. So the little bit of moment about the hinge will be X times the little bit of pressure force. So it'll just be X times delta P times W times DX. And if I want the total moment caused by the pressure forces acting on the whole set of areas here, then I'll just integrate or add together all those little bits of moments. So I'll do that over the whole length of uh, the box. So this, this, this will go from the hinge all the way out to here. And that distance is the D, right? It's, it's this distance right here. And so that'll be the moment caused by the pressure forces. It'll be the integral as x goes from zero to d of all those little, all those little moments. Right? So I can plug in, well I, I can, the, the pressure remains constant, the w remains constant, so then I'll have the integral of x dx. So that, that'll be a 1 half x squared evaluated between 0 and d. So then this comes out to be delta p times w times 1 half d squared. So that's the moment that's holding the lid closed. Again, remember, this, is, this moment is the moment caused by these pressure forces that's acting to hold the lid closed. So I'm trying to balance that with this moment. So this one's acting to hold it closed. This is the delta p w 1 half d squared. Right, so that, that's that term right there. So now what I'm going to do is just solve that for F. So, sorry, this is getting a little bit messy, but I'm going to solve that equation for F. So that will be 1 half delta P W times D. Make sure I did my algebra correctly there. I think I did that all correctly. So I can plug in the numbers for that, the, the delta P is going to be the pressure at sea level. So in imperial units, it's 14.7 pounds force per square inch minus the pressure at an 8,000 foot altitude. So the way I'd find that, uh, let me just make a note here. This is the pressure at sea level. The pressure at 8,000 foot altitude, the way I would find that is there's a thing called the US standard atmosphere and what it does is it gives you the pressure and temperature and air density at various elevations. So you can look that up, you know, look at it online, Google it, you can find it. But the pressure at an 8,000 foot altitude is 10.9 PSI or pounds per square inch. These are absolute pressures, by the way. So then the, we can find the net pressure. The area, of, well, the W, so that we're basically calculating W times D here. The W was given up here 6.46 inches and the D is 5.11 inches. Those are the actual dimensions of the box. I still have this box, by the way. And uh, so this comes out to be, let's see, this is 5.11 inches. So when you plug in the numbers for this, you'll find that the force that you have to apply comes out to be 62 and a half pounds force. It's significant. Right? This is why I had such trouble trying to open this box is I had to apply about um, 62 and a half pounds on the very edge here in order to peel this thing open. So uh, what I ended up doing is I, I couldn't get my fingernails under the lid, so I actually had to put in, um, I can't remember exactly, I think it was a coin or a paper clip or something just to break the seal. I basically made a little lever to pry it up right here and then... Uh, eventually was able to open it. And once, once I got it a little bit open, then it was easy because as soon as it was open a little bit, then the sea level air rushed in and then equalized the pressures on both sides. So then it was easy to open. But uh, it was challenging to get it open. Um, 
because of this pressure difference. So this is a good example uh, in which you're calculating um, a moment due to differences in pressure. One thing that's perhaps a little tricky for you, you may have not seen this sort of approach before, is I, I found this moment due to the pressure force by looking at, the, by calculating the moment due to the pressure force on small little areas. And the reason I did it in terms of small areas is because the moment arm was different for each little area. You don't have to do it this way, um, but this is a good technique because in later courses, you may have, you may, you'll have to use this technique due to varying pressure values and different kind of areas. For this one, you could have also just recognized. Um, well, I, I won't talk about it here, but uh, the the thing that um, that probably threw you on this example uh, is this little small doing it in these small little areas. Anyway, um, it's a nice real world problem, something that happened to me. So hopefully. Uh, hopefully you understand it.